Well, we've got some mail today. I've got quite a bit of mail. Big boxes this time. This one's special. As always, I'll give you links to things down below if I can give you links for them. These are some stickers. These are stickers from a certain band called the Podgigi. Now, you may or may not have heard of them. They've been around for mm, 30 odd years. 34 years now, I think. It's the style of music that I like. Anyway, I quite like having stickers like this on some of my equipment like I've got some laptops and stuff which I have which I use at events and I like to have these stickers on my laptops to help identify them as like that's mine there's no disputing then that that laptop that happens to look exactly the same as other people's laptops it's definitely my one because it's got a unique identifier on it next thing here the wrapping. Not too exciting, just some um, Thunderbolt cables. We've got a Thunderbolt 5 cable and a Thunderbolt 4 cable. Now these ex cables are surprisingly expensive, especially this one. This cable here was $130. This one here I think was I think about $50. The reason being I got these is that I've now got myself a Mac Mini, the new ones. M4 Pro chip on it. I've been very impressed with the computer so far. Got one little thing with it which I think is like an incompatibility with my big monitor, my main 4K monitor. Under certain display conditions it will flicker. I think it's got to use dark mode and a certain amount of darkness on the screen it will flicker and if I change window sizes or move something it will go away. But my other monitor doesn't do it. I've tried changing the configurations and plugging things in differently and using different adapters and all sorts of stuff doesn't matter it's always does it so i think it's a thing with the monitor where it doesn't like the signal coming out of the mac mini anyway i don't know if it's a mac mini problem i think it might be but that's the only thing i've had with it which i've not been happy about everything else has been great so um it's way faster than my old machine it's like nine times faster than my last machine it encoding videos it's incredible anyway i didn't have many in the way of thunderbolt cables like thunderbolt three four five now the Mac Mini I've got has got a Thunderbolt 5 on it, so I've got a Thunderbolt 5 cable, but the reality is a Thunderbolt 4 is probably plenty good enough. So I've got one of those as well, and as I didn't really have any, I thought I'll get a couple, because I've got some other bits coming which will need these as well. More paper packaging, brilliant. So what I actually purchased was some more inner loop batteries, so some double A's and some triple A's. I used to have rechargeable batteries many years ago when I was a child. I used to have a lot of NICADs, right, as I think a lot of people did. And they were a compromise. These days you get nickel metal hydride and they're far better. Not so much of a compromise. And I've only just really started getting back into having rechargeable batteries again, you know, relatively recently actually. I've always been using these little cheap little, you know, multi-packs. You, know, you buy a pack of 30 batteries for like five bucks or something, and they're, they're garbage batteries, they don't last very long. And it doesn't matter because they're cheap, you chuck a new one in. Well, that's not very environmentally friendly, is it? I'm not being a, a greenie here, but you should still try and make an effort to try and do the right thing. We do have limited resources, and, you know junk batteries aside. I've decided to get back into doing small rechargeables and because nickel metal hydride batteries aren't much of a compromise anymore then I'm trying to use any loops in them. I use six of these in a um, those little brother P-Touch printers things, label printers. Like these drawers stuff like that, sort of print it out for that sort of thing. So I had some alkalines in there, some cheap ones. They leaked. I managed to repair I should have actually recalled it but I didn't, it wasn't really much. I fixed up the corrosion and put some inner loops in it and that left me with only two inner loops left of this size so I thought I'd get some more because they're going to sit there, they'll sit there for a while. Like I said I'm replacing all of my equipment gradually with these batteries instead of replaceable ones so every time I get to a point where I'm replacing batteries these ones go in. Anyway, not that exciting. So I think this one came from Amazon Compressed air duster. I thought I'd get one of these and try it out. I don't know how good they actually are. Probably need to charge it first or something. It's probably in the manual. But you've got different attachments, cleaning brushes, stuff like that, so which attach in some way or other. Little bag to put it all in. 
and the USB-C cable. It was putting out two amps, so that's dead flat. Press power button three seconds to turn it on. So I was thinking about the amount of times I've been cleaning out things, like working a bit of the test gear and stuff like that. I have to go then get there with the brush and try and like do it outside. Obviously, I still need to do this outside, but try and get the dust out of it so you can work on it. And various bits of equipment. I've done that many, many times. You can buy these aerosol spray cans of air, compressed air cans, all right? And they're expensive. They're like I think they're like fifteen dollars or like to buy one. It's just ridiculous. So if you get a blower, you don't need to buy the compressed air cans. Now I don't know how good this is going to be overall. It may be rubbish. It may be fine. A little flexible hose in there, interesting. I thought it was an option, and I'll give it a go. If it works out all right, then great. If it doesn't, then I didn't waste much money. I think it was about 30 or 40 dollars. Apparently, it's a charge indicator. Please use an A to C cable to charge, no C to C cable. Interesting. The charge indicator isn't coming on either. This could be an interesting time. Maybe to use one that came with it. But that said, it's using two amps, so I don't know. There you go. Oh, yeah. yeah, that works. Cool. Charge indicator, I can't see it, but uh, can't see the damn thing. Anyway, it works. Cool. And that looks like it's pretty effective. More paper. So we have, we've got a tester, HDMI cable test. I saw this on Amazon. I've seen it on someone's channel, I don't remember now. So the idea is you can have HDMI cables looped around and you can check for all the connections on the cables. Got some LEDs down here. There are standoffs, so you can stand off a desk. Descriptions on the back there, all the pin outs, what the pins are. So it gives you an idea of what's actually going on. And there's the front. So you've got mini HDMI, micro, standard, and the same on this side. So no matter which cable type you've got, if you've got a standard adapter from say mini to standard, like I do with my camera here, um, then you can just loop it around and check for dodgy connections. So the reason I purchased this is because on my camera here, I have issues on this camera where the cables seemingly fail. I've had to replace them a few times now. Even though I don't get actually used that much, this sort of just put in place and they get moved a little bit, but not really right where the camera mount is, like where it goes in. Yeah, anyway. So I've got the tripod comes up and I've got a cable attached to the top of the tripod, which loops around like that and, and plugs straight into the side of the camera. And that then allows me to view the camera on a remote monitor. So I can see much bigger like the focus and stuff like that and make sure the focus looks about right. If you're using a little LCD that's built into the camera, you can't really see that stuff very well. So it's really hard to tell. But if you've got a big monitor, it's much easier. Yeah, that's so why I got this, because I had those cables keep failing, or seemingly failing. It needs to be giving trouble with like the image cutting out and not coming back and that sort of stuff. And I replaced the cable, wouldn't it be right? So I thought I'd get this to check the cables out. So I do have issues with cables again. The next one that fails, which is obviously the one that's on the camera now, I could plug it in and see if it does actually have an issue or not. At least an obvious break or something like that, or short. Time my camera's just being a bit picky about cables or whether it was actually an issue. So this will be a link down below. This will be an Amazon link, I think, if I do an Amazon link. I've got an Amazon store. If you ever want to purchase stuff from my Amazon store, go and have a look at that. There's links down below to that. 4 terabyte 990 Pro NVMe SSD. Now it's got some my Mac Mini, which I've purchased recently. Now I did pay extra on that to upgrade the Mac Mini. I got 48 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte hard drive, so I ended up paying $4,000 for that computer. So <laughs> more than I really wanted to. Even one terabyte for me is a bit tight. Now I'm only using about three quarters of it right now, so I'll get a four terabyte and I'll put that in an external case. I'm already using an external hard drive anyway. I've already got offloaded a bunch of my files into an external drive. I've had that for years. But I think if I go to a four terabyte drive, the files I've got now will fit onto it and it will be much faster because right now it's an external spinning disk drive. This will do gigabytes a second. Yeah. Now the last thing, this one plays far, far away. This is a clue for people which watch the channel for a while. Who this is? Now this has been sent to me by another YouTuber 
and I think he takes great pleasure in wrapping these things in tape just to foil me with my rem knife. <laughs> Let's see how we go here, eh? Let's see how I figure out how to get into this without using a real knife. Oh, no, no it's not winning yet. Not yet. Oh, it's got other tape behind. Oh, no, I'm going. No. You got to use a real knife. Damn it. Oh, okay, some adapters. These are some. Um, oh, it's good. <laughs> Ian made these. All right. So these are from Ian Johnston, right? I should say that from the very beginning. The person that made the PDVS2 Mini and the PDVS2 and the uh, multimeter tester. What's it called? I forgot what it's called. DMM Contingency Tester. He made that as well, which is open source. And numerous other things I'm sure too anyway these are some little adapters which is designed, it's got his name on it 20 pin FPC 1mm pin dispatch useful, of course he had some laying around because he had some made this is a clue LCD fixing tape and retainer ok all prepared for me more clues Right, nice, <laughs> nice big logo on there, cool, it does it say on here what it is, so it takes a blue pill, it doesn't actually say on there what it's for, I mean I, I know what it's for, I'm surprised he hasn't put it on there, um, so it takes a blue pill, which is also included, it's the STM32, and some components, it sent me a little kit, and this has got a plate here, for a controller which goes on here which I have on my desk hold on let me find it I'll explain what it's all about very shortly so in here I have this module here I got this from biodisplay.com so it's a little module which goes onto this PCB so this is the LT7680AR driver and this little board here will sit on here like that this is for that that sits on there okay and then you have a TFT this is a 4.58 inch I think it was part numbers on the back there HD 458002C40 and the idea of this kit is to upgrade a piece of equipment which I'll explain in a second Got those from buydisplay.com. I need to get some more actually. I want to get a spare. You always need to have a spare. And now no, I'm actually going to use this. I'm going to buy more. So, this kit here, which Ian sent me, just figured out how to do this, is to upgrade the display on the Advantest R6581 and 6581T. Now, I've got a 6581T. This is the 8.5 digit multimeter. I already did a video showing a upgrade which was designed by Mickey T on the EV blog forum. He designed, we reverse engineered the, the driver stuff and all the PCB control and came up with a upgrade for the, the display because it's got a VFD which is normally an issue with these, they get really faded with age because they're old multimeters, the VFD ends up just basically being unusable as was mine, I've done a couple of videos about it before. Mickey T did a upgrade for it which I've done a video about on mine, I upgraded mine to that already and so did Ian, he did exactly the same upgrade on his. But then he decided he wanted to go a step further. So he wanted to use this much larger display. The one that's in there now is a 3 inch, is it? I can't remember what it is now. It's, it's not as big as this. It's sort of two thirds the size, the one that's in there now. And it's not this style, it's a different style. He went a bit further with it and reverse engineered it some more. Redid some of the formatting of the decoding of the display. Did some more conversions on the blue pill here and design this PCB to mount it all. Obviously because this now it needs to run the controller which is what's on here. It's actually a controller on this board, it's not just an adapter. It's a controller on it. So he's going a bit further with that. He's generously sent it to me to try it as well. I know he's already done it to his own meter. It would be great to put this on mine as well. So I know he's put a lot of work in doing those conversions trying to figure out special characters and things like that which 
aren't part of the normal character set of the display. So then you design this PCB to make installing things a lot easier. Got the blue pill that goes in there, which is pre-programmed. Although he's made some changes since he sent this to me. I need to reprogram the blue pill, that's not a big deal. I think it's all open source. I know on his GitHub, he's got all the firmware for this blue pill here. The latest firmware, I think this may be on there as well. I think it was making this open source, so anyone could make one of these display converters if they wanted to. You just need to get the right driver and the right display from bydisplay.com. So this is a nice little project for me to sit down and do. So it's included all the parts I need. It's got the FPC connector, capacitors. I don't know why he sent me capacitors. I do have some of my own. <laughs> Mind you, I think there was an issue with size or something, with, with um, headroom in one situation or something. I'm not quite sure there was something there which may be why he sent me those ones because it knew it fit. Got some standoffs in here as well for the mountings because the original mounting screws. So there's mounting screw holes here. There's mounting screws to hold the PCB on the back of the control panel on the front. And so there's obviously design needs to use those original mounting screws. But instead of putting the screws directly onto the PCB for the display panel, you put standoffs in there, then you put the screws into this to mount it above it so it's sandwiched, so it's all close together. Now I do know that distances were an issue because the flex on here is not very long and it barely reaches from around the front of the PCB right round that one to this panel so I know that getting the distance was tricky and it barely reaches so I know that was something he was trying to work around which is why it's got this little cut out here to try and get a little bit more of a curve on it and sort of stuff that's good so it's a little project for me to sit down and do build it up and probably do a video about replacing that display for the second time so the one i put in already although it's smaller it's perfectly functional it works fine it's perfectly readable and it's fine if you don't want to go to this level of what's the word i'm looking for perfection <laughs> i think perfection is probably the right word so if you've got the compromised display is smaller than the original it's a compromise, everything's a bit smaller, it doesn't look quite as nice in some ways, but it works. Whereas before, you had no working display, so what I've got currently from Mickey T, which he designed and reverse engineered, is brilliant because before that, there was no option. So, although it's not perfect, it's still really good. Ian went a step further in order to use an even bigger display to get it looking even nicer. It's even two colour and everything, it's multi-colour display and that's a little project, so I've waffled about this long enough. So thanks a lot Ian for sending that to me, that's much appreciated, very generous as always, Is Ian's generous to a fault, he's really generous. When he said he's going to send this to me, I offered to pay postage again, and he said no, nope, don't worry about it, again. <laughs> so, <laughs> this has been sent to me free by Ian, so very generous guy. He's contributed a lot to YouTube and the electronics community, let's put it that way. It's done a lot. A subscribe link over there if you're not already subscribed to the channel. Other videos to watch down there. Maybe it'd be one there for the Advantist R6581T. If YouTube's AI can have the brains to link that one in, that'd be great. Otherwise, I might have to do it manually. There's a Patreon spot link over there if you want to help support the channel and help me to buy equipment. You know, I could buy another $130 Thunderbolt cable. I might need it yet. Catch you later.